finally got around to buying an automotive picoscope. I'll give it a go and see how it works. I'm going to try out this picoscope. I didn't buy any leads with it. Everything I'm doing is using all the old hand tech stuff that I got before. Hand tech leads and attenuator. So I'm going to set it up on here. It's a different setup than I've seen before. So it'll take me some getting used to it. Sorry about the glare. It's a really bright day today. But it's more to just to see what it's like doing a hand, hand tech equipment. If all you can afford at the moment is a scope. Or well, that's all you want to go for. Because you may have already have other leads and stuff. So I'm just choosing the probe. The 20 to 1. It ain't a Pico one, but it's it's a hand tech. But I'm just seeing. It was just to see if it's gonna work. I got that set up. I'm gonna start the car. See on the blue one, it's really small now. I'm gonna change the settings. So on this one, I didn't make that last. Those spikes going slightly up. Try again. I'm going to put a trigger on it by going up to the middle one that says trigger and on. So we want it on the peak trigger. Channel A. That's going up. That was easy enough. I had to adjust the ground cable on the battery and it's given it a better image. So to adjust the trigger there, I, I can't just move the pointer and click on it on the screen and put a dot where it should be. I have to go up to the top into the trigger setting and go plus or minus and it will move it up or down um, until you get it where you want it. It seems easy enough to use, just getting used to it, trying all the hand tech stuff on it to see if it's going to work. I'm going to connect up the other wire onto the 12 volt supply side to the injector to see what happens. The bottom one is the blue one that's going through the 20 to 1 attenuator. And that's the control side, ground side control and the fuel injector. And the top one is battery voltage. That was just in case you want to check for dropouts. And I don't have a fault with the car, I'm just getting used to what how it works. So that's set up into there. I've actually got it in another fuel injector. But it should be 12 volts on all of them, so I'll just move it across. And it's still battery voltage. So I want to see what else I can use, what, what other parts of my old hand tech kit can be used on this. The next thing I'm going to try is the amp clamp. Now I'm going to go through the menu and switch on channel C and set it up for the amp clamp, the low amp clamp, and the 20 amp scale. So what am I doing? Pressing... So I click on C on the box there and just try and figure out how to switch that channel on. Got the oh, you click normal right there where, next to where it says off or auto. Click normal and it switches on. And then you can change the probe, same as before, but I'm going to click the 20 and 60 amp. It's going to be showing a picture of Pico stuff which I don't have yet, but I will get them soon. And I'm going to choose the 20 amp setting. And that that's how I get that on the screen. Just need to change the settings on the side there, because that's going up to 0.8. Maybe a total of 1 amp on the screen. So, just figuring out what I do. Oh, it's, on, it's on the box itself. You just click the plus arrow, 
So if you want it to have a higher range, and you just click on that, minus 5 to 10 amps. It seems to set the, the screen rather than per division that I was used to with the hand tech. So that would be 20 amps on the screen there. You switch on the amp clamp. Zero it out. Like I say, it's hand tech stuff that I'm using. Just because that's what I've got. I'm just going to plug that into the scope now, into channel C. And I'll move that battery voltage lead out of there to make room. And I'll fit this amp clamp and I'll go into the wire. It does show you a way to invert it if you do get it the wrong way around. That's easy enough on the same screen that you just clicked for the probe. See how tiny it is on the scale there, that small ramp? So I'm going to bring this minus 5 to 20 down. I've got plus or minus 5 amps. Plus or minus 2. Now we can see it there. So far I'm not having a problem using other leads, which I didn't really think I would do. I had heard other people demonstrate this, like Steve Scott, Simply Diagnostics, went into some detail with it. And I'm sure he said that you can use other leads, and that's when I decided, well, I might go for it. If I can just get the scope on its own now, and as I want to replace the leads, I'll get better ones. So it's easy enough to change the time scaling. Yeah, a lot more detail on here. I'm much happier with the picture than I was. I was never dis disappointed with the hand tech. I just wanted to get something slightly better. So now what I'm doing is changing the time. Just to have a look and see. One thing I would have noticed now when I zoom out, I would have lost some of these... Um, some of the detail, I would have had some of the spikes look a bit lower with the hand tech, but on this Pico it shows everything, which is the main reason I went for it, so that I don't miss information to help speed up my diagnostic time. So now I've... I've froze the picture and I've managed to, paint, to bring up a thing to zoom in. And I'm just playing about with it. So I can zoom in or out on this sliding scale at the bottom. Right there is just hover over it and slide it one way or the other on that blue dot. And that just zooms in or goes further away. And you can slide the, the pattern over to another part of the image. So that's really easy to use. I, I like that. You zoom in or zoom out. And this is just from clicking on the, the magnifying glass. Now I'm going to try the hand tech uh, coil unplug. Secondary pickup, but it doesn't have a ground cable or a clamp. I'm not sure how safe it'll be, and I don't want to damage this scope that I just got. Anyway, I gotta go to the drop down menu and it's there. I'm just gonna go into the coil unplug. I'm not using the hand tech one. So I'll just go into that and it's changed the settings to kilovolts at the side. I'll lift up the, uh, the red line though so that I can get to see the dwell angle. Now I'm checking directly on the coil I'm on cylinder 3 that's quite a good capture waveform to look at it's enough to analyze it because I'm triggered on cylinder 1 injector I'm not going to see the other coils at this point because they won't fit on the screen so I'm going to have to take the trigger away or switch off 
channel A. And then it should be okay. Okay, I'll check the coils again. Just running through the coils. Sorry about the glare and the shaky vision. Just going through from one coil to another. And this is using the Hentec pickup. But if you already had any pickup, you could use whatever you've got. I like the detail in it. It's only working fine. It's actually doing a better job on here than I got on the Hentec. Some of these coils, even though I'm using the pickup, the same Hentec probe, I'm getting a better picture on here. Such an easy to use layout in the Pico as well. I know it's a sunny day and I had a lot of glare on the screen but it's handy to know that if you started off with a hand tech and you can't afford a starter automotive Pico and you want to go the way I did with the poverty package and that's just a scope on its own it still works and it works. It's really unbelievable what you can see compared to I've, I've used the Pico for um, no, I've used the hand tech for a few years so I know what I would have expected to see with that and the Pico already, even though I'm just doing a basic injector waveform, it's definitely a lot more detail that I can see. I'll get to use it a bit more as I get more cars that need diagnosing and I'll bring it along and show you what else it can do. Thanks for watching.